Your headset purchasing decision can mean the difference between the end of your COD Warzone games looking like this. Oh. Versus this. So I mean, come on, which one of those variations would you really like it to be? The second one, right? Alright, listen up. What's going on guys, it's Pixelated, and today we are going to be talking about probably the two most talked about headsets for the PS5. As we all know, Sony has introduced the 3D Tempest audio engine built into their PlayStation 5. This is something they created, and it's supposed to revolutionize the way we experience audio in games. You're supposed to hear your enemies coming in from every direction, from every level, top, bottom. If they're below you, you can hear them. If they're above you, you can hear them. Usually we can just hear what's around us, and sometimes it's not that clear at all. But with this 3D audio Tempest engine, it's supposed to change everything. I mean, you might have seen Mark Cerny explain it in the PlayStation 5 developers video that came out way before PS5's release, but for most of us that just sounds like technical mumbo jumbo, a whole bunch of audio tech jargon that most of us can't decipher. But as consumers, we know exactly what we experience, so when we put the headsets on, we know what we hear. With that being said, we're going to be taking a look at this headset right here, the Arctis 7P Steel Series, and comparing it with the Pulse 3D headset by PlayStation, by Sony, for PlayStation. Both of these headsets are designed specifically for 3D audio, so much so that they they don't even have virtual surround sound built into them and i'm not saying that as a bad thing i'm saying that just so you know that 3d audio is an actual thing headset companies aren't just claiming this for the sake of it they are actually designing their headsets to use 3d audio and make the most of it now before we get started make sure to hit that like button if you happen to enjoy the video at any point make sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos it helps the channel out a lot and make sure to hit that noti bell so you can join noti gang so you don't miss out on future videos i've also started streaming on twitch you can go ahead and check that link out in the description it's twitch.tv pixelated if you want to see more or PlayStation 5 gaming, you want to talk sneakers, streetwear, I do all that kind of stuff, we might even be getting into some mukbangs and some crazy stuff, so go ahead and check that out. Now the main headset we're going to be looking at in this video is the Arctis 7P Steel Series. I want to really focus on these this video, we will get more into the Pulse 3D headset later down the line, but we're going to do a few comparisons here and there. Now the Steel Series Arctis 7P I would say is a mid-range headset that's offered by Steel Series. It's obviously compatible with whatever you want to use it with, but it is being marketed as a PlayStation 5 headset just because it's been designed to take advantage of PlayStation's Tempest 3D audio engine. It's probably a handful of headsets that are currently taking advantage of that 3D audio engine. There are still more expensive and more technical specs heavy headsets that are available on the market like the Astro A40. We'll get more in depth into pricing and what tier of headset this is later down the line and we're gonna go over more attributes of this headset like the connectivity, the audio quality, the features, but first let's start off with the comfort. This is the PlayStation Gold headset that a lot of people bought to play first person shooters and other competitive games online on the PS4 or the PS4 Pro. There isn't much comfort on the headrest. There is a little bit of padding, but at the same time, this headset really isn't that heavy, so you don't really need a lot of comfort features. The ear cups are large enough to go over my ears, but they're not completely over my ears, like the bottom of my ear is still being pushed in a little bit. It's not the most comfortable thing, but it's not that bad. These usually retail for about 100 bucks, and I got them on sale for $79.99. You can usually get them on sale for 80 bucks if you're patient enough. Ultimately, they're not the most comfortable, but they're also not the least comfortable. They're sort of a midpoint if i were to give them a rating i would probably give them a six and a half out of ten the playstation pulse 3d headset retails for 129.99 which is 130 canadian dollars they've obviously implemented a lot more features for comfort here you can see that the cups are already a lot more padded they're larger and cover my ears a little bit more they're not pressing down on the bottom of my ears so that is a significant improvement we also have this band here that pretty much adjusts automatically to your head you don't have to adjust anything you don't have to pull things up and down to figure out what your comfort point is you just put these on and just that's it, which is a very valuable feature to me. I don't like adjusting things on my headset every time I put them on. I just want it to be a little plug and play type of situation where you can just put them on and start gaming. That brings us up to the Steel Series. Now, I gotta say, I've always been a PlayStation guy when it comes to headsets, as I've just shown you, but this is my first foray into a non PlayStation premium gaming headset. And two of the most notable features about comfort about this headset that I've noticed are that when you put them on, you don't really feel them on your head. They're so light, it feels like you're not really wearing headphones. I mean, of course you can't 
ignore that there's a little bit of pressure on the sides because of the ear cups but aside from that i don't really feel anything up here i don't feel much i don't feel the weight of these headphones which is pretty crazy considering that they are the steel series and are built of steel which i believe the steel is actually helping make these lighter the second biggest comfort feature is these ear cups right here now the playstation headset the pulse headset as well as the playstation gold headset what you can see here is it's made of some type of synthetic leather which i mean if you think about it in your head is not really the most comfortable material i mean their sofa is made of leather and they're super comfortable but what's amazing about these headphones is that the ear cups are made of cloth they're still padded which makes them super lightweight and once you put them on you almost don't feel them at all the second most important thing about these ear cups is the shape because these are a little more oval versus the playstation ear cups being circular when i put these on these don't press on my ears at all in any way and i do have slightly you know sizable ears this has me wondering why playstation keeps going for those round ear cups my guess is because it is a more visually pleasing design versus something that is a little more oval like these that are designed more for your ears but are as visually pleasing. Now that we've talked about comfort, let's talk about the fit a little. Remember when I talked to you about the PlayStation Pulse 3D headset and how it has this strap up here that automatically adjusts to the size of your head? You don't really need to adjust anything manually. Well, when it comes to the Steel Series Arc to 7P, we have a strap as well. However, you do have to manually adjust it via this Velcro strap right here. So when I put it on, I almost have to decipher where to put in this Velcro strap. And sometimes it's not that simple. I mean, sometimes I'm wearing a hat. Sometimes I'm wearing a beanie. Sometimes I'm not wearing anything when I'm gaming. So for all three of those, I constantly have to adjust this strap. And I find it a little cumbersome because once you remove this thing, this thing isn't really held in place by anything. So sometimes once I unstrap this, it will probably just like move around and I'll have to find it again and then plug this back in at the same time. Because this is a cloth strap, there are no measurements or anything, I can never really tell where the sweet spot is for me on where to keep this when I'm setting this headset on my head. So it's pretty much a guessing game every time I put these on, if I switch my headgear or if I'm not wearing anything. I mean, the logo here looks nice and all, but it is a little annoying that I have to constantly adjust this to get the right fit. Ultimately, though, it's not the most game-breaking decision. While I do love being able to put these on right away every time, no matter what headgear I'm wearing, the ear cups on these are probably a more preferable situation for me. I would prefer something that is super comfortable super lightweight that I don't feel on my head versus something that even though I don't have to adjust it all the time, still a little bit of a comfort downgrade versus these. Okay, now we're going to talk about the audio quality and now I'll drop some technical specs on you guys, which to be honest, I don't even know what most of them mean sometimes, but you can usually tell what the better spec is based on, you know, whether the number is bigger. So, so I've got the box right here. I'm just going to look at the technical specs on here because I don't have them memorized and I'm pretty sure none of you do either. Unless you're an audiophile, then you probably would. But if you're an audiophile, you're probably getting those better headphones for for listening to music, but we'll see how that works out. The frequency response range is from 20 to 20,000 Hertz. Seems to be quite the standard with the higher tier gaming headsets like the Astro A40 has that same frequency response range. Of course, maybe there can be a little variation when you actually test them, but for the most part, what I've seen, these seem to be doing okay. These are 2.4 gigahertz wireless headsets. You shouldn't be expecting Bluetooth headsets to be playing video games because I believe the low power consumption of Bluetooth headsets makes them prone to lag, audio delay, potentially not the highest quality sound either. So you don't want delays when you're playing games. You don't want your voice comms to be going in like 30 seconds after you put them in. So now according to SteelSeries, they claim that their Arctis 7P provides the signature Arctis soundscape, which allows you to hear subtle in-game sounds as well as critical in-game sounds. Obviously that's a bunch of marketing, but also I can say that it is true. I can affirm that you can hear all types of sounds with this headset in game. I've tested them out and compared them against the Pulse 3D headset from PlayStation. I'm going to do a separate video that's going to be a direct comparison of the two, but I got to say the Arctis 7P really outshines that headset in many ways. Now I've tested the SteelSeries Arctis 7P out on Warzone, playing it on my PlayStation 5. I've also tested the PlayStation Pulse 3D headset playing Warzone on my PlayStation 5. They've both given me pretty satisfying results, but there are quite a few differences. In a game like Warzone, you need to know exactly where the enemies are coming from, chests also make a sound so it helps you pinpoint where those are so you can go get the loot you don't waste a lot of time looking for it the more important detail is obviously when you hear the enemy's footsteps so you can fire at them you can find out where they are so they don't just sneak up on you and kill you with the pulse 3d headset i was able to do that it wasn't the most clear but it definitely did the job it is a significant step up from the playstation gold headset that i used to use on the playstation 4 however i do have to say that it wasn't the best quality sound one of the things you will notice about playstation headsets for whatever reason and this goes on with the PlayStation. PlayStation 4 headsets as well, like the PlayStation Gold headset and the PlayStation Platinum headset, they're not very bassy. The low end is very... 
I would say non-existent. <laughs> These are very treble heavy headphones and if you like bass or if you want to hear the low end sounds, you can definitely hear them but they sound very tinny, they sound very flat, they don't sound very deep. Of course that's not the biggest deal when you're gaming because you're not there for the audio quality experience, you're there to really figure out what's going on around you. Of course the audio quality is important and these are very good quality, the sounds are crisp, however it doesn't have the range that you'd expect from a headset. For example if you wanted to use these to listen to music, definitely not going to be your go-to headset. I then use the Arctis 7P to play Warzone on my PS5 and I gotta say the sounds when you hear enemies walking around you, the footsteps, when you hear the chest sounds to go find the chest where exactly where it is, there's definitely a marked improvement when you use these versus when you use the Pulse 3D headset. The sounds just sound a little more clearer and it really helps you pinpoint where the sound's coming from. A lot of the times when I'm using a PlayStation Pulse headset, when I hear a chest, I go towards it in its general direction. I don't know exactly where it is or when an enemy's coming towards me, I have a good idea of where they're coming from. I don't have the best idea. For example, if I'm in a warehouse and there's two entrances on the left side, I can tell that the enemy's coming from that left side. And usually I can tell which entrance they're about to enter from, but it's not always very clear. It's hard to tell. It's hard to really put into words how much of a difference it makes using the two different headsets. With the Arctis 7P, I can tell exactly which entrance they're coming from. And it's the slightest audio improvement that makes the biggest difference. Even with loot boxes, I know exactly where they are. Of course, part of that includes the intuition to know where loot boxes spawn because I've played the game for so long. But there's also quite a bit of difference between the clarity in this headset versus the Pulse 3D headset. Another significant improvement of this headset is obviously the low end sounds. The low end sounds don't sound tinny. This isn't a treble heavy headset the way the Pulse 3D headset is. Oftentimes when I have to increase the audio for the Pulse 3D headset, it can get a bit jarring when I'm listening to it because it's so high in the treble and so tinny when you hear the low end sounds. The bass is pretty much non-existent in the Pulse headset. Whereas with this one, you can definitely hear the bass. You can hear the lower end sounds. I even tested both headsets on my phone playing music and these clearly sounded better than the Pulse 3D headset. Another way to describe that comparison would be when you hear footsteps in the Pulse 3D headset, they sound like footsteps, but they sound a little flat. But as you know, when you hear footsteps in real life, they have sort of a low end sound to them, you know, like and when you hear them in this headset, it just sounds more realistic and just better quality overall. Now, I can't tell you exactly how well both of these headsets take advantage of 3D audio. Obviously, 3D audio is a very new technology. It is pretty vague in my opinion because it's relatively new. We don't know what 3D audio really means just yet. In other words, because these are my first two 3D audio headsets, I can't really tell you exactly how well they're taking advantage of the 3D audio. I do believe they're taking very good advantage of it though. Just a reminder that 3D audio is software based, so technically everyone has it. The 3D Tempest audio engine is built into the PS5, not into your headset. However, there are obviously headsets designed specifically to take advantage of the 3D audio engine like this headset as well as the Pulse 3D headset. But that doesn't mean you don't get to take advantage of 3D audio if you own a PlayStation 5. You get to take advantage of 3D audio as soon as you own a PlayStation 5. And I'm only saying this just to let you know that you are experiencing 3D audio to some degree if you're using headphones on your PlayStation 5. Just because I have friends who've told me they experience better audio just from playing on the PlayStation 5 versus the PlayStation 4 using the same headsets or even the same earbuds that they own. Because some of my friends just end up using the earbuds that they got for free with their phones. Remember when that was a thing? And they've told me that it sounds much clearer, much better. So 3D audio isn't just coming from the headsets, it's also coming from the audio engine built into your PS5. Okay, before we move on, there were a few other things I wanted to touch on when I was playing on Warzone with these headsets. Surprisingly, at range, when a person is further or a chest is further, you can hear it much more clearly and you can actually hear it on the Pulse 3D headset. Whereas when I was playing with the Steel Series Arctis 7P, when an enemy was at range, it was a little tougher to hear them. It was a lot clearer when they were closer. So in that regards, you actually have a benefit to the Pulse headset. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because Warzone is still considered a PS4 game and it was optimized for PS4. And although this is a PS5 headset, it just for some reason happens to work with the PS4 games better than Arctis 7P. I ended up trying both headsets on Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War for that very reason. It's a PS5 game. It's probably optimized better for 3D audio. And what I ended up finding out was that the Arctis 7P has a major advantage. So when I first started playing with the Pulse 3D headset, I found that I could still hear enemies. It just wasn't very clear. You can hear gunshots here and there, but everything just sounds a little bit muffled. It doesn't sound as deep. Again, it sounds flat because it's the Pulse 3D headset. But as soon as I switched to the Arctis 7P, you could clearly tell where each enemy was. The footsteps were extremely clear. The difference between the Pulse 3D headset and the Arctis 7P was on display here. It was crazy. The amount of sound I heard in here and how much more clear it was on the Arctis 7P versus the Pulse 3D, it was a night and day difference. So when you spend a little more for headsets like these, you kind of see the value in these types 
type of situations. But it's interesting to see that the Pulse 3D actually had some sort of an advantage in Warzone, whereas this had more of an advantage in Black Ops Cold War, which is more focused on the next generation. So I want to talk about the connectivity for both of these headphones for a bit. The Pulse 3 headset is very simple. It comes with a USB-A dongle. Just plug it into your PS5, turn on your headset, and your headset is good to go. When it comes to the Arctis 7P, it comes with a USB-C dongle, which at first glance is a confusing decision. Why would they go for a USB-C dongle when most systems have a USB-A port? Like the PS4 and the Xbox One, there's no chance you can plug this in because it is a USB-C dongle and they do not have a USB-C port. However, SteelSeries is not as dumb as I initially thought they were because the headset actually comes with a cable that is a USB-A to USB-C cable. For some reason, it's not focusing. So you just plug the USB-C dongle in here and then you can easily plug the USB-A into your PS5. Obviously, the PS5 has two USB-A ports in the back, so that's where I plug it in. It's very seamless. It's not protruding in any way. At first, it makes you question why they would go with this USB-C dongle. Why not just go with a USB-A dongle if that's the situation? But then you realize that this is actually a very smart play because you can use this on pretty much anything. Like you can plug this into your phone and use the headset on your phone. Obviously my phone is a little busted right now. I'm gonna switch it out soon. But this is actually a more versatile situation than the USB-A dongle. For example, the Pulse 3D headset, if I wanted to use it on my phone, I would have to use this adapter right here, which makes it, instead of making it seamless with my phone, you instead get this really long protruding thing popping out of your phone, which is very inconvenient. This dongle is also designed to be plugged into the Nintendo Switch, so you can easily just plug it in and use the headphones there. Ultimately, it is the better option. It did look weird at first, but it makes more sense now. A little bit more about connectivity. Both headsets have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack if you want wired connectivity and if that's the way you want to go. However, the Steel Series comes with a completely different input that I had no idea why it was there. This one right here, we have micro USB for charging, which I'm a little disappointed about. I wish it was USB-C, but we'll get to that later. We get this little input right here, and I didn't really know what it was for, but when I started testing out the wired connectivity for both of these headphones, I noticed that the Pulse 3D headset maintained its audio fidelity with the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. But when I used the 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the SteelSeries Arctis 7P, I would notice a considerable deterioration in audio quality when I was playing Warzone or when I was playing Black Ops Cold War. What I ended up realizing was Steel Series opted to use this little guy. I think it's called a four pole input. I think it's recommended to use this four pole input for the wired connectivity. And you'd be wondering why would you use a four pole input and where can you get a cable like that? Don't stress it. Steel Series has included that in the box as well. It's a four pole cable that has a 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the other end. Pretty much everything uses 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So you need that other side to plug into a 3.5 millimeter audio. Ultimately, when it comes to connectivity, the Steel Series Arctis 7P wins out because of its first versatility. You can use it with pretty much anything. And because it has those deeper sounds and the bass actually exists in these headphones, you could probably use it for music if you wanted to. Okay. Now going over the features of this headset, there are quite a few. So bear with me here. We're going to start off with all the buttons on the ear cups. The first one we have here is this mute button, which a lot of headphones don't have. And I'm so happy that this exists because it's an option on the Pulse 3D headset. The Pulse 3D headset has a mute button as well. But when you use it as a wired headset, you can't really activate the mute button. The mute button doesn't work. So I have to go into the system settings for the PlayStation 5 and I have to mute it that way, which is a little cumbersome. Of course, it's not the most annoying thing, but if you're in the middle of a fast paced battle and you got to mute something, that is a very inconvenient way to go. For whatever reason, I don't know how SteelSeries does it, but this mute button right here, even with the wired connectivity, when you have your headphones connected through a 3.5 millimeter audio jack or the four pole audio jack, whatever, whichever one you want to use, you can still use the mute button to mute the headset, which makes me wonder why Sony wasn't able to do that on their own headset. How is that not a thing? That should be standard in my opinion. The next thing we have is this volume rocker right here. I find this very convenient because because once you figure out a volume that you like, you can just leave the volume rocker there. At the same time, the Pulse 3D headset has its own volume rocker, which are two buttons, volume up and volume down button. Of course, that means you can't really put it in a specific spot where you enjoy the audio, but when you press the volume buttons on the Pulse 3D headset, you see it on screen. It shows you a little slider of where your volume is. So whatever you find is your optimal spot. You can just leave it there and that'll be perfect for that. The next set of features is the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, obviously four pole audio jack. We've been over that. Once again, I'm disappointed with the micro USB USB charging. Of course, I wish this was USB-C. Pretty much everything PlayStation 5 related is USB-C at this point. The charging state, well, not the charging station, but the controller, the Pulse 3D headset, most likely any other future accessories that are coming out are going to be USB-C and they're going to be faster charging. So it's a little disappointing to see this micro USB cable because that means I have to keep a micro USB cable on hand when I could have just had a USB-C cable and it could have charged everything that I needed it to. Another cool feature about this headset is its steel construction design. It's really sturdy. It's very well built, but it also allows it to be 
lightweight at the same time. It's a little thin. There isn't any padding here, but you don't really feel it because all you feel is this strap right here and you don't even really feel the strap. It's so lightweight that you don't even feel it on your head. Again, another one of the features are these soft fabric ear cups. I've already talked about these and how good they are, how great they feel on your ears. Not much else to be said there. Another important feature of this headset is this slide out mic. Now, I don't know how long this is going to hold up. Hopefully this doesn't loosen up over time and stays this way. Supposedly, this is the same mic they use on airplanes. Pilots use these to communicate, etc. So it has the same similar type of noise cancellation technology. And I got to say, with my experience with this, I believe that to be true. With the Pulse 3D headset, it has two built in mics. One, I believe, is for noise cancellation. The other is to capture your voice. It works great when you're talking with your friends online on PlayStation for me. They can hear me fine, but the voice is a little muffled. You can tell it's muffled. And that is most likely because while you're talking out, you know, your sound is projecting outwards this way, but the mic is on this side. So it has to pick up what you're saying from the side. It's not the most convenient situation. At the same time, it's more difficult to cancel noise that way because since it's not directly angled with the mic, it kind of has to pick up certain things. And when I play with my friends, I kind of like to joke around here and there. I'll play some music on the Pulse headset. I can play the music from my phone from a distance and they can hear it. With the Arctis 7P, I've noticed that even if I put the headset on, I have the mic out like this and I play the music even this close to the mic, they can't really hear it at all. I literally have to put my phone on this side of the mic, I might have to pull it out a little bit and literally put the speaker next to the mic, which is pretty crazy. I've also heard what my voice sounds like on both mics, and it is definitely clearer on this one. I asked my friends to compare at the same time, and they told me the same here. Initially, it sounded a little quiet here, but that was also because I wasn't positioning this mic properly. It was coming up here, and I just had to pull it down to my mouth so they could hear me better. Finally, we have this side tone scroll wheel on the other ear cup, which doesn't really make sense to me. Basically, the higher you scroll up this side tone, the more you can hear yourself when you talk through the headphones as long as you have the headphones on. It's just a monitor switch and it's really not that important and this is where the pulse 3d headset really shines because it has this in-game versus chat volume mix rocker so you can switch between how much you can hear the in-game audio versus the voice chat and the steel series arctis 7p for whatever reason lacks that feature would i switch the side tones out for that feature any day of the week now of course this means you can't really adjust the in-game audio versus the voice chat in any significant way without having to go into the actual games menus and adjusting voice and audio settings that way it's a little more annoying and a little more inconvenient but at least it is there and there is something you can actually do about the volume mix. Another minor feature here is that the ear cups can turn sideways. Of course, there's no significant advantage to this other than the fact that it makes it easier to travel. Coupled with its 24 hour battery life, that is something that is very valuable actually because now you can actually use these to travel if you have a trip, if you're going on the airplane, which not a lot of people are doing these days, but eventually, hopefully we'll be able to. If we do get that opportunity again, this will be a very, very good wireless option for a pair of headsets. 24 hours is an amazing battery life compared to the Pulse 3D headset, which I end up getting probably six to seven hours before having to charge these again. All right, let's talk about pricing. This headset retails at $189.99 Canadian dollars, which is quite steep considering the Pulse 3D headset is actually $129.99. However, considering there are headsets that are below this price and above this price in the gaming headset market, this is pretty much a mid-tier headset. I would say it's slightly mid to high tier based on the feature set. Of course, this is a $60 price bump from the Pulse 3D headset, which is actually sold out at the moment, probably because of the PlayStation 5 launch, but also because of its approachable price for a pair of competitive gaming headsets. But when you look at the $60 price bump, you have to consider the added benefits like the audio quality, the significantly improved mic quality, the comfort, the phone compatibility, the versatility, and the 24 hour battery life. This is something you can actually use not just for gaming, but you can use it for listening to music or just listening to audio through your phone. You can travel with it. It's got the sideways flipping ear cups. It's got the 24 hour battery life. You can connect the USB-C dongle to your Nintendo Switch. Of course, you can connect the USB-A dongle to both of these as well, but you need the adapter for your phone. It's pretty clunky, sticks out pretty bad, and it's going to stick out in a weird way from your Nintendo Switch as well, if you have one. Ultimately, this feature set is not very necessary if all you're going to do is play on the PlayStation 5. At the same time, you have to consider the audio quality and what kind of effect it has on your gaming, as well as the battery life. Do you want to keep connecting your headset to charge it every night and decide between whether you want to connect your controller to charge or your headset to charge during certain times? Or do you just want to have that 24-hour battery life so you can go several days without having to worry about charging the headset? Those are quite a few factors you need to take in when making your gaming headset decision. Okay, let's talk about design and aesthetics. Granted, these aren't the best looking headphones on the market. I'm not gonna lie. I really appreciate the white, black, blue color palette. The logo patch on the strap is cool. But aside from that, if you were to make this an all black headset, there's really no standout design feature here. It doesn't look very cool. The colorway is what makes this cool. The ear cups are kind of those standard oval ear cups that don't look very aesthetic. And honestly, that is my guess on why PlayStation keeps going with these round ear cups, probably just because they look better. And honestly, as great of a headset as this is, when it comes to design compared to the PS5 Pulse 3D headset, these things 
please don't stand a chance. Like, look at this thing. This thing is a thing of beauty. PlayStation might have not focused on all the audio quality, but they definitely focused on the design when it came to this headset. You have this almost floating ear cup feel with this swooping white, the end of the headrest with the PlayStation logo at the end, and this one size fits all strap that all you have to do is put the headphones on. They really thought these things through with this headset. Unfortunately, they most likely had to make some audio and mic compromises to get it into the price point that they did. Of course, it is more approachable at this price point of $129.99 versus $189.99. At the same time, for whatever reason, these are sold out everywhere. That's not something I was expecting, but it ended up happening and these aren't easy to get right now. So if you were in the market for a pair of good gaming headsets, headphones, headsets. So if you're in the market for a good gaming headset and you can't seem to find the Pulse 3D headset in stock, I would definitely recommend these. I know it's a $60 price bump here in Canada, probably a $50 price bump in the States. Consider saving up that little bit to get one of these. Okay, so my final thoughts on this. Some of the pros, superior comfort, even next to a very comfortable pair of headphones like the Pulse 3D headset right here, these blow them out of the water. It's a night and day difference. It's got better bass and lows versus the very tinny sound of the Pulse 3D headset. Crisp audio quality, nothing to complain about when it comes Comes to audio quality. It's travel friendly, very versatile, it's phone friendly. You can use it with your phone, you can use it with your Nintendo Switch, you can really use it with anything you want to. It's got a durable construction and it's got a built-in mute button that most headphones don't have and sometimes they aren't functional like the Pulse 3D headset is not functional when you connect it with a wire. However, these are still functional when you connect it with a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, so that's amazing. Design might not be the best in the world, but it is still a classy design. The colorway is amazing, the blue, white, black colorway, as well as this Steel Series patch just to add that little bit of flair and just the fact that it's constructed with steel is something that makes it more durable and it just feels better in the hand. It also gives it a nice texture when you see the coat of paint on the steel. And some of the things I don't like about this headset is the price. Of course, it is a $60 price bump over the Pulse 3D PlayStation headset. For me, the audio quality when using the 3.5 millimeter audio jack is still a little questionable. I'm not entirely sure why it sounded different when I was playing Black Ops Cold War with a wire 3.5 millimeter audio jack connection versus when I played with the wireless connection. I will say this this, the audio quality does sound better when I use that four pole audio jack connection versus a 3.5 millimeter audio jack connection. But at the same time, I don't see why that difference should exist. It really shouldn't. Again, another thing I don't like is the lack of voice chat versus game audio mix buttons. Like instead of giving me this useless side tone scroll wheel, just give me a voice chat versus in-game audio scroll wheel and I will be happy. Another thing I don't like is even though it's supposedly designed for the PS5 3D audio engine, there is no visual display or compatibility with the PS5. Whereas when you use the Pulse 3D audio head Headset. when you're adjusting volume it gives you a visual display on the screen it also gives you a visual display of when you mute the button it'll give you a little icon letting you know that the mic is mute or whether it's not mute you don't get those visual cues on the ps5 you don't get to see the battery display with this headset so you won't know when it's about to die i mean it might give you a little indicator i think the light on the mic starts blinking red when the battery is really low but other than that there's no real indicator of what the battery life is whereas with the pulse 3d headset there is an indicator showing exactly what the battery life is on the ps5 lastly this is not my favorite design having the mic pull out and be in front of my face whenever I have to drink water I kind of have to push the mic to the side I understand why they did it for noise cancellation purposes for better mic quality because now you can direct your voice directly to the mic most gaming headsets have that setup so I understand it it's still not my favorite because I've been spoiled by all the PlayStation headsets that come with built-in mics again it's a compromise on audio versus comfort and convenience and aesthetic but at the same time it's not my favorite design guys that's my review on the Steel Series Arc to 7p I honestly think this is probably the best headset you can get for the PlayStation 5 right now in this price range if you want to go above in like a crazy price range to 350 to 400 dollars you can get the astro a40 but in this price range i would say this is ultimately the best playstation 5 headset do you guys have any differing experiences or do any of you own either of these two or do you plan on getting either of them let me know in the comments below i'll catch you in the next one keep on gaming